streams that followed, a stream of them. But also on the other side, Mike, let me ask you, what New York Times reporter, what Washington Post reporter was assigned a story by their editors to go see what really happened with Dianne Feinstein and well, ask that's Dianne it. Feinstein and her staff that's it. the sort of questions that would have happened if the Republican Party had done the same thing. Not one. And I, and I challenge New York Times reporters this morning, not reporters, editors. I challenge Washington Post editors. I challenge Wall Street Journal editors. I challenge editors across America. Write that story. What happened with Dr. Ford's agreement? Uh, with a congresswoman, uh, with Dianne Feinstein. Why did they leak that story? And more importantly, look at yourself and ask yourself the question, why didn't we report on this in real time when you sure as hell would have reported on it if Grassley and his office had done the same thing? I've been quite clear here. I think the Republicans acted shamefully in those judiciary hearings. I think Lindsey Graham embarrassed himself. I think Republicans embarrassed themselves. But Mike, so did a lot of the Democrats. So did whoever leaked that that letter for, and and pushed Dr. Ford out of the closet, and 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 journalists in America have a lot to answer for. Why couldn't they play this down the middle? Well, Joe, first of all, you can put the Republican members of the Judiciary Committee. You can set them aside because there is no separation between them. And, and, and President Trump. They speak the same language, they go after the same sores to peel off, the scabs to pull off the American public. But on Senator Feinstein, I believe, and I think other people believe, that was the core of the Democratic weakness in their, in, in, in their uh, behavior over the course of the past month. That letter to Senator Feinstein, she received it in early July. And the idea, I understand, you know, Dr. Ford wanted to remain anonymous. There was a way to do that. There was a way to get that letter, the contents of that letter, into the hearings. That, that was a critical point in, in, in what happened during these hearings. And the other thing was Michael Avenatti's client, hmm. the, the woman who reported that she went to several parties, several parties, where, where Justice Kavanaugh was present and there was a, serial of, a series of gang rapes. Preposterous story, a preposterous story that ran on the front pages of many newspapers. Uh, you know, I don't know what you say after that. The, the, the ball game yeah. was lost in terms of public opinion, and now we were into, uh, you know, it was a hoax, the President of the United States basically calling it a hoax. Uh, it, it was a truly depressing, depressing experience. Well, and, and, and again, Willie, the question is, uh, why didn't they focus on the allegations before them? Yes. And why didn't they ask the same tough questions of Dianne Feinstein and her staff that they should have rightly asked of Chuck Grassley and his staff? You held the letter for a couple of months. You waited until Kavanaugh's hearing was over. And then you released it at the very end. Again, the only question I'm asking today is, why didn't one editor for the New York Times or one editor for the Washington Post or one editor for the Wall Street Journal say, you know what, that's a story we really need to dig into deep because they're not telling us the truth.